Hey, hey, it's another week of the Manson Brothers show. I'm your host. Am I the host? You are the host. I am. The with, the host. Host. with the most. I'll say the least. Stone Manson. The ultimate Hellraiser, I think. I think we refer to me as the ultimate Hellraiser. Yeah, we're we did. do a show on Hellraiser. Enough times. We yeah. will. But with not the today. the immovable force. My brother, Skull Manson, a.k.a. Carlos. Love him to death. He is older. And Man, uh, he's got to point that out every time. And stronger. And oh, thanks, badder. Okay. Uh, in a lot of things, uh, only mom thought I was badder, but anyway, he's pretty great though. Thanks. Uh, and he's wearing that bowler hat again, I think it's called. It's a derby again. <sighs> I'm not sure we've really covered that one anyway. Hey, this week we're talking about uh, weather anomalies, blizzards, we're talking wrestling, I think, wrestling, right? um, music. We're not, nothing about women is coming out this week for a specific reason because we're talking about. The Arctic Isolation film, The Thing. And we're coming right back with that. Stay tuned. He, like, went all ape shit, and he killed Vic and this other friend of ours. He was out of control. It was like he was all rabbit. 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 All right, hey, we're back. Cheers, everybody. It's time Cheers. for another cocktail. I think my brother's got a coffee or milk. Coffee. Or Probably some quick. Is it strawberry quick? Strawberry. Uh-huh. Or as I used to say when I was hey, a little kid, strawberry. This week, Carlos, we're um we're going back to the carpenter theme. Yep. Uh it's no secret. We don't agree on much, but we do agree that we love John Carpenter movies. We do. Um, this is his best horror film next to Halloween, in my yeah, opinion. I, I actually I actually feel like this is one of the most underrated movies he's ever had. Which is which yeah. is the thing because it's not because it bombed when it came out. Most of his films did, with the exception of Halloween, pretty much, right? It stank up the arena worse than a mic. And why movie. did it stink up said arena, dear brother? I, I don't know. That's a good question. I think because E.T. came out at the same time. Thank you. People wanted Sam. warm, fuzzy, happy aliens who weren't e. going to e. annihilate the planet. Oh, no. mm -hmm. yeah. I liked it when I was a kid. By the way, the truth be told. I, I have never seen the movie E.T. Uh, it's worth a watch, even at an older age. I'm going to ask you this question okay. right, right now. I yep. think this, it, this might be the most poignant question we ask in the history of the Manson Brothers Just don't show. stick me with it. E.T. or The Thing, which has stood the test of time over the years? Ooh. Well, I, I think... Okay, so so E.T. was a massive... Don't think too hard. Right, Just say what you got I won't, because I don't want you to smell it. Uh, E.T. was a massive hit when it at, came out, the and it has maintained, right? Has it? Yeah. It yeah. Has. Yeah, because they have, when it came out on Blu-ray and all, that was a big deal. They have a ride... In, in Disney World, ET ride. It, it's or no, is it Disney World? No, it's at Universal Studios. Anyway, either way is a ride. But uh, they don't have a Manson Brothers ride, so that tells you something right there. But anyway, my point is the ladies do. Well, well, that is true. That is true. But anyway, we digress. We digest. So uh, the thing was not a hit when it came out. The thing was a bomb. I mean, people, we liked it. Definitely, people liked it. I loved it, but it didn't gain like its like classic movie status till much years. But if many, you were going to later. say which one today had a bigger fan following, I think the thing has a way bigger. Fan I agree. That's my whole point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think with the massive su success of ET when it came out, yeah, and how much the thing floundered when it yeah. came out. If you looked at them now, I would bet. I would bet you could take anybody from ET, put them at a horror convention. And no one would give a shit that they were there. Take anybody from the thing, they'll have a lot. Oh, of I, I agree 100%. I think that's to be said about a lot of horror movies. I that agree. A lot of them came out and sort of were glossed over. I'll give you another one right off the top of my head. Return of the Living Dead. We'll do a show about that one, too. Well, but that one didn't do very well either when it came out. And it's, a, it's considered a classic today. I in fact, it. the first time I saw it, I didn't like it. Now I love it. So. Exactly the same way. I saw it in high school with the cool kids, and I didn't dig it. No. I was. There. I think it was no because mom was because I was grounded. In the cool kids. No, because I was grounded. Square. No, I was in the tough kids. Whatever. Anyway, so yeah, that's why it. Uh, Speaking I think of the tough kids who got no chicks, 
There's no women in this movie either. No. Uh, could you even except do that? For the, except for the chess game, who's a chick. <laughs> Come on. That's an animatronic chick, which you're very used to. I understand it. Hey, um, my dates are my dates and but nobody else's could, business but could, my own. And again, listen, no one loves the ladies more than me. I got all their albums. Love you guys. But can you imagine making big a fan, film today fan. without any women? I don't uh, think you get a made. Uh, no. Like if you made Reservoir Dogs today, it would have to have three chicks in it. <laughs> Mrs. Brown. <laughs> uh, and look, hey, we're not saying there's anything wrong with <laughs> Ah, uh, real funny. funny. I got a joke for you. We're not saying seven idiots anything. sitting around saying Quentin wondering how the hell they got there. We're, anyway, we're not yeah. saying there's anything wrong with women in films. We love women. We love seeing women in films. I love but women. This particular, I love films. I love women in films. This particular story has no women in it. That's the way it was written. It was written in the fifties. It's about an archeo, uh, um, an Antarctic research facility, facility right yeah, yeah. and there was just no women there so you know that's what it here, is. here's an interesting thing and i and I, people touch on this nowadays about the arctic they they feel like there's some i'm just gonna call it crazy shit that goes on up yeah there. a lot of rumor cool. about that stuff but, but, so so not knowing that back 40 years ago what what the fuck were they even researching up there it's nothing but ice and, and polar caps. i think the deal was they were researching weather patterns uh, I think that's what it was. Look at the big brain on skull. <laughs> By the way, another You're a smart uh, motherfucker. You want like another that. cool story on Antarctica is in the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. I am not going to see that. But uh, anyway, movie. so there's no women. No. But what there is are, are dogs. dogs. Yes, there's dogs. <laughs> Lots of them. Well, well, let me, uh, you know, Siberian huskies, I believe. Yeah. To, to be specific. Yep. Yep, very close to uh, the wolf family. But here's the other thing. They're, they're Malmutes or Huskies, one or the other. But they were one of those Arctic dogs. Mush, mush, Malamute. <laughs> They've come, Malamute. <laughs> Who is that? Um, Savoir faire. Savoir faire is everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> anyway, and other crappy cartoons. From Great the cartoon. Great. Yeah. Do not let him call it crappy. crappy. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I think you have an interesting theory about the dogs. I do. Let's hear it. Well. I have hypothesized on many an occasion. And sometimes uh, that's when he eats chili a lot. In, in the, the privacy of my own bedroom. Hypothesis. Um, that you cu- you could another reason why you couldn't make this film today is there are multiple dogs yep. shot and killed. All of them. Both in the film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which and and in this day and age, we're fine with hundreds of people literally being mowed. Watch a John Wick film. With an ooze. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How many people get killed in the John no Wick? No dogs get killed in John Wick. No movie. dogs get their nails clipped in a John Wick film. And if they did, PETA would be boycotting. Not only PETA, French baguette, marble rye, Italian loaf, Wonder Bread. Baked goods cannot and will not ever boycott or picket anything. Why not? Pizza. People for the ethical treatment of animals. Oh yeah, those guys. They mean well, but sometimes they screw I love things animals. up. That don't I love animals. Be, I do too. But, but they don't need to be. You don't need to pick it. But they, all it's the stuff. movies. Yeah. You're not killing an actual Make animal. Believe. We are doing it for artistic integrity. Right? These are the same people that would tell you some of these actors are really tough Spoiler guys. Spoiler alert: If you have not seen the movie, hit subscribe right now and then pause. Go watch the thing. And come it's a back. great movie. Uh, and then we're going to wreck it for you right now. Yeah, right now. Pause. Now we're back. And uh, dogs get killed. Yep. Uh, as a matter of fact, they, they, they get split open. <laughs> you know, the thing is the dog, yep. right? To start. Yep. Uh, and what happens from there, Carlos? Well, from there, they're trying to figure out who the thing is. Let's talk about R.J. McGreedy. Let's talk about R.J. McGreedy. We talked about in our episode about The Fog, about Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins, well, who was a, a drink. Yeah, who was an unlikely leading man, an unlikely hero, because he's sort of the guy that's not your first choice. He's probably not even your second choice. He's your only choice, and he doesn't want to do it either, but he's no. thrust in the situation. But when you see R.J. McGreedy, played by the great Kurt Russell, come on the screen, you know. He's your choice. He's a man of action. Yeah. He's he's taking care of business. He's ready to fight and all that. So there's a two good examples of leading men in the difference. I get the feeling in this film that everyone else in the movie is has has uh, begrudgingly come to the Arctic to work 
because of the pay yeah or whatever the case may be whereas mccready has gone because he's got nothing better to do he's running from something yeah right and 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 he was probably involved in this very same scenario like in the caribbean or something yeah probably a similar alien i gotta get the hell out of here i'm taking off to the ark so it was a jerk chicken it, it problem. Was, yeah, yes. But, That's but McCready, Jamaica. McCready right. is the archetype hero, right? I mean, he's yeah. he's the badass. Yeah, the, he comes to get his with big a great beard, beard, a great big oversized great cowboy hat. And just like you'd want a hero to be. Yeah. You know, all this. Yeah, when he comes on screen, you're like, That's the guy. That's the guy I want saving my Absolutely. Ass. And he does for the most part. I mean, and what's kind of funny is. There's a couple of guys that could lead that troop. You got um, Keith well, David as Child. Child's definitely could lead it. He was a 100%. badass. Totally. When I that was the first movie I ever saw him, in. and when I saw him, I'm like, oh, that's a tough looking guy. What about um, what about uh, the diabetes guy? Oh, Wilford Brimley. He couldn't lead it. He, the oatmeal guy. It's the right thing to do. No, because right, he thought it. McCready. When they said McCready's going to be the leader, he's like, it's the right thing to do. You know, Wilford Brimley was talking about diabetes and oatmeal. He's like. 38 years old he yeah. just looked like he was 50. He, he, he was born looking 85 he, <laughs> he oh was in God. cocoon when he was in his 40s 49 years old in cocoon <laughs> playing a senior center. when he was the grizzled old manager in the uh, natural yeah he was a year older than robert, <laughs> robert Redford. Redford. god bless robert god Redford. bless him god bless wilford brimley anyway yeah so he, here's your de facto uh well so yeah mccready is is like he's the guy he's the guy and and so which is cool because it, it because it falls to him and he wants to take charge oh, and he's the guy that figures out the hot needle bit the blood yeah with the blood and all that and which brings me to an interesting point yeah if every individual cell is its own Thing. organism that needs to fight for its own survival yeah and a bunch of these cells replicate into me, let's say, and you're sitting here and you're a replicated cell as well. Are we still having the same conversation doing this show? Or are we ready to battle it out? Know, take on each other. Well, that brings me to my question. If you're a thing and I'm a thing, do we know we're things? Like, do, not that I know that you are, but do I know that I am? Well, I'm definitely a thing and I know I'm a thing. You know you are? You think you do? You don't oh, think you're oh, Stone Oh, you mean Manson? like the thing in the movie? Yeah. Oh um yeah no not that thing yeah you've been thinking yeah thing I, for years. I i do think you're a thing and you know you're a thing i don't i think it duplicates you so good that you don't realize that you are well then the how would you then thing i as somebody else i don't know Dude, nobody knows the answer to this shit. and we shouldn't and that's the way it's supposed to be so i have a question that i think is paramount to any of this so the movie takes place on this arctic you know yeah. uh research facility like base at one point they're getting ready to, to chop her to the old facility right, right? the norwegian one. and they're concerned about a blizzard that's going to take place yeah Bad they don't want to get caught in a whiteout which brings me to the age-old important question what's your favorite blizzard flavor from dq heath bar really yeah that's not bad toffee is pretty good good toffee is tough to beat i dated a girl named toffee one time she hot i already yeah. know the answer never mind uh her sister extra, was what good does that do you that's my date one could hope anyway extra peanut butter cup blizzard that's number one i think that's a good one got any seconds uh yeah i like butterfinger i know that's pretty close mm -hmm. to toffee and it's kind of in between it kind of bridges it's actually the gap. like a combo of toffee, toffee and, and peanut butter cup. yeah yeah no i'll go That'd be uh, my second i'll go take five Oh, that's a good one. Underrated highly candy underrated bar. candy bar. Very highly underrated candy bar. Um, anyway, we've got an email. All right, let's get the in. email. And this email is from... Love you, fans. Absolutely. Uh, this comes from Melissa from... Uh, God, where is she from? Port St. Lucie, Florida. That's a mouthful. Wow. Have you ever been there? No. Spent a lot of time in Florida? Uh, yeah. Remember when we used to go there and do that hop before we go to Puerto Rico? Yep. And everybody would get shivved in the fucking shower and we'd have to duck out at the end of the night. I don't know if everybody got it, but we didn't get it. Because <laughs> we got the F out of there. Top gig down there. Paid Whoa. well. The Puerto Rican broads were on point. Ooh. And the and the food. Good Lord. Oh, man. Love Puerto Rico. Uh, anyway, so Melissa All writes, you Puerto Rican people out there, love you. Love you. Even though we're Mexican. We're okay, though. We, we don't. We don't. Baño. Yeah, we Whatever don't. Uh, we don't uh, prejudice here. Melissa writes. Um, 
So at the end of the film, yeah. we see McCready and Childs yeah. uh, with each other hanging out. Do you think that here are the three scenarios that Melissa writes? They are both the things. Mm. One or the other of them is a thing, or neither of them are a thing. I think they're both the thing. I know that. I think they're both the thing. I think you're wrong, and here's why you're wrong. If you keep telling yourself that enough times, maybe it'll come true. Yeah. Well, much like your delusions, I'm right. And here's why I'm right. Because they Those know they're good. not getting out of there. They're drinking out of the same bottle. If they weren't sure if they're the thing, why would they do that? Why would they risk infecting themselves or the other one? Huh? Answer me that. At, at what point in the film does drinking out of a bottle make you the thing? They said, remember the one guy goes, maybe we should all be eating out of cans. Because if they're sharing spoons or sharing, yeah, yeah. drinking out of say, they could ingest a cell I of the thing. neither of them are the thing. Based on uh, the same things I based my. They've on. just killed the thing. They just ex blew him up with with TNT. Yeah, but they blew the cells all over the place. Uh, which brings me to my next question: hmm. favorite songs about explosives? About explosives? Yeah. Well, God, the King TNT by ACDC. Yeah, I can't even think of another one. Drop the bomb on you by the oh! Gap Band. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the winner right there. That was pretty awesome. Oh, you dropped a bomb on me. You that's what it is. Bomb, bomb on, me. on you. Baby. Yeah. You dropped the bomb on I me. think that's the best one. And I don't even know. Oh, all dude. right. And other songs. That is the best one. All right. All right. Back back to I think it's neither of them. Mm -hmm. I think, and this brings us to the wrestling jargon of the week, that it was what we would like to call in the business a Broadway. <laughs> Broadway. They killed the alien, and the two of them are going home. Scott Free. Well, they're not Scott Free. They're, they're not going home. They're both freezing to death. Right. They're both going to die. Gonna yeah, they're both dying. Yeah. Um. So, Carlos, for the people out there, describe to us what a Broadway is. A Broadway, dear brother, is when the promoter or the booker comes up to you and says, "Uh, we want just to go thirty minutes." Booker will be a later date. Thir yeah, thirty minute Broadway. That means if they're thirty minutes. You're still brawling, the bell rings, and there's no clear winner. That's, That's it. Correct. That's a Broadway. That's correct. So it's a draw. A draw. Or something to that effect. Right. It's a Broadway. Who was... Carman, sorry about that, buddy. Who was the king of the Broadways? Ric Flair. The greatest by 150 trillion times. King of the Broadways. That guy could go and go and go the and book. go. The and stories go. about him. If you ever get a chance, there's a great story that Terry Taylor tells. About Ric Flair showing the Red up Rooster. Er, to the er, 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 I love Terry Taylor to the guy. Superdome in New Orleans. Sold out. He comes in and Terry Taylor walks into his dressing room and says, "Hey, what do you want to do tonight?" And he says, "Kid, go get me a cup of coffee and I'll see you out there." <laughs> so they've been drinking all night. <laughs> we did a six. They did a sixty-minute Broadway. Terry Taylor said, "I came back and threw up," and and Ric Flair got his shit on and went out <laughs> partying. He was the best, the best of all time. Yeah, the king. Uh, so uh, again, going back to Childs and and uh, and McCready. Yeah, Mac, as I like to call him. Mac, that close. Mac. Um, I don't believe that either of them were the thing at that point. Uh, you know, I think they're both. The thing. But but I I do think it's open to interpretation. Yeah, so. because the, and that's the one great thing about the movie is that uh, Carpenter lets you kind of they don't really explain a lot, which I like. There doesn't you know some movies that are where they don't give you enough. It's like okay, this is BS, but some movies, they don't give you enough. It's for a reason, right. and it works great. And then some you can get too much, and right. you don't want to know exactly no. what happened. Like, and I think no, it's like, ah, oh, that's a bullshit. Example. I'll give you a great example. In the book or the movie, It, any of the view, uh, different renditions of it, it's really scary. Pennywise, the clown, and at the end, it's a giant spider. Yeah. And who gives a shit? Really, Stephen King, it's the best you could do, a giant spider? Hack. I mean, a giant spider on its own would be kind of scary. Right, hack. 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 I'm just kidding. I love Stephen King. Salem's Lot's the best one. I love Stephen Tyler from Aerosmith. I do, too. I he looks like somebody's of, grandmother he now. He does. It's a shame. I love a lot of different Stevens. But where I'd like to segue from that is uh, we love music. We like to talk about music. Yes, we do. All the time. Um, let's start with Led Zeppelin. Let's start with the... Again, we've been talking about the thing. It takes place in the Arctic. There's a lot of weather. 
but you know favorite songs about the weather or snow well you got a, an immigrant song from led zeppelin yeah, that's classic they come from the land of the ice and the snow. snow might be the greatest song of all time and the shortest song of all time yep for them yeah oh, hey what's God. yours what do you think i like uh, i'm gonna go with informer by snow a licky boom boom down yeah baby another talentless white i remember rappers. that back when i was living in florida for a while when when you were trying to do whatever you were doing back in the day wrestling yeah uh, we were both wrestling that's okay uh you were wrestling with something else how about how about uh how about cold as ice from foreigner oh another absolute classic i'm gonna go with uh um cocaine by eric clapton that's also not about as, snow. Also known as snow. He's reaching. How about By Tour and the Snow Dog by Rush? Oh, that, Rush that's not even a song. It is, is a it? song. It's off Fly By Night. Does White Room by uh, Cream count? Does oh, it, oh, does it off, snow in the room? You've got White Room. you got White and Cream. Both. They're both white. It's kind of like snow. Whatever. I think you're reaching. But you I'll accept it. But I'll accept it. I appreciate that fact. So uh, now we're going to come to the time where we've got a new segment on the show. We do. We do. What is Absolutely. it? Absolutely. It's a little thing I like to call the little thing. The little thing. The little thing I like to call the little thing. Because it's not only the little things in life that are so important. As you know very well, my dear brother, in wrestling, it is the little things that get you over for what you're doing. And we'll come anything. back to the term over later on. Well, we got a good little thing for this. We got a one. great little thing this week. So I'd like it, you to kick it off. I will. So in the movie, it's hard to notice uh, before HD, but now that it's in HD, you could you could see it pretty clearly. So uh, the actor who plays the doctor, Doctor Copper, was mm -hmm. an actor named Richard Dysart yep. from L.A. Law, and he probably was in his earlier mid forties at that time, maybe in his late forties. I don't know. Yep. So this is 1982, not two, not 2022, right? In the movie, he's a middle-aged man, an MD, wearing a flannel shirt, and he's got a nose ring, a stud in his nose. I think it's a stud or a ring. I can't remember. It's a, it's it's a, a, it's a, hoop. a hoop. Yeah. Okay. Now, if your doctor today showed up and he had a hoop in his nose, you'd be like, man, he's got a hoop in his nose. Okay. But in 1981, when they shot the thing, it, it, it was if, unheard of. If your doctor in 81 shows up with you a show, nose ring, you're, firing you're pretty him. sure he got his degree from like, University Barbados, of American Samoa, yeah, right. or something to that yeah, effect. Got it from the you don't want him to be your doctor. The University of South Barbados. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you don't want to be your doctor. But I thought that was interesting. So my question is, and if you people know, please write us at mansonbrothers.com if you have an opinion on it. I want to know: was that the actor's decision? Was it Carpenter's decision? Was it a wardrobe decision? What do you think? Well, knowing. Well, I mean, I don't know John Carpenter, obviously, but but know it watching his style and knowing yeah. his style as I do, and knowing how much attention he pays to detail. Yeah, right. And and how. And he know, tried to get it close to the original story too. He didn't take a lot of liberty. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I I think and 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 kind of knowing what we know about the, the you know, prequel sequel slash prequel, yeah. et cetera. Um, I think it was his decision to have something that you could, if you could actually pick it up on VHS at the time, yeah, to know that he was not the thing, a thing, thing. because you know, it can't the thing copy could only, could only regenerate matter. human cells, right? Like it couldn't do if you had a plate. In that's your arm a good or, point. I'll go with that. I'll, I'll whatever, go with that theory. You know? I think that's a good theory. So, yeah, yeah, that's the little things. When you watch the film, check it out, you can really see it in the scene where he punches uh jack hallahan and with the cpr paddles goes oh my through, God, gets yeah. his arms chopped off and then the head runs well, away. okay and... so speaking of which you know as we're as we're kind of closing in on running out of time what is your fa i mean this movie is filled with insanely uh, great kills yeah. or what we'll call great practical practical effects what's what's your favorite my favorite is the scene the first scene in the dog uh pen mm -hmm. dog kennel where the thing breaks out of one of the dogs, reaches up and pulls itself out because we don't really know what the thing ever looks like because it's duplicating so many other things. Yeah. So we don't know if that's an iteration of something it it duplicated on some other planet somewhere, if that's really it. But I think if there was a thing that was the, the original, what it so looked you, like. You feel like that 
iteration. I when think it's that's crawling it. yeah, out yeah, yeah. Kind of what the thing. Looks yeah, like. I think it is. If, and it, I re- if there is a, if there is it, and, yeah. and that's a really cool scene. I, I, think. I love that scene. Yeah, of course. I, I love. Yeah, all they're all good. I, for me, that's just my favorite. It's a hundred percent the scene uh, with the paddles when they're trying to resuscitate. Yeah, oh, so and, and and the chest opens up into a mouth. Yeah, and the arms get bitten off, and then the icing on the cake. Uh, you know the coup de gras is the head slowly inching its way off yeah and, and the spider legs coming out and of course and cliff what's his nuts his yeah line. The, the, the the greatest line of the whole movie the only comedic line it wasn't frankly, meant to be funny no, but it is of the whole movie which hilarious. is hilarious because he's such a stoner kidding me yeah I mean, it's like it's great uh, uh, that, that's one of the best all around great movie if you haven't seen it go oh watch God, it if you yeah. have seen it watch it again and and with that, it is time to do what? Talk about the website. Nope, we got to no. take it home. Oh, it's time it to home. take it home, folks. This week's show. Uh, but just like you said, we're going to talk about the website. You can get brothers. Going to talk about merch. Yeah, we can get Manchin Brothers merch. He's wearing a shirt. I'm wearing a shirt. Right? They got a funny thing on the back. You can Two get your them. Blu-rays. You can get your DVDs. You can get your autographed pictures. You can get these ducky hats cool. like that right there. We got coffee mugs. Oh, we're sold out of the coffee mugs. We've got race cars. We actually sold out of something. Yeah, we'll go figure. Pretty great. We'll sign it all for you. Pick it up at mansonbrothers.com. Listen up. The movie's also available on VOD, Voodoo, iTunes, Amazon Prime, and most streaming services. Tune in next week. You'll see the Duke. You'll see Jimmy Page. You'll see us. We might even ring the bell. You never know what we're going to talk about. And until next time, it is definitely you. It's not me. See you later, shitty pants.